رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدم من لسانی یفقہ قولی پروردگار میرا سینہ کھول دے اور میرے کام کو میرے لیے آسان فرما دے اور میری زبان کی گرہ سلجھا دے تاکہ لوگ میری بات سمجھ سکیں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ہاؤ یو آل آئی ہوپ یو آل آر ڈوئنگ ویری ویل I am Ms. Fosia Altaf and today we are going to discuss the chapter number 16 of grade 12 biology and that is about support and locomotion and today is the lecture number 7 from this chapter. Before starting the lesson I would like to share a quotation and that is self-respect is the fruit of discipline, the sense of dignity grows with the ability to say no to oneself. So sometimes it's better to say no. So today we are going to discuss about the ultra structure of the skeletal muscle. We have earlier discussed about the different types of muscles and one of them were uh, skeletal muscles. And uh, we have discussed some uh, major points of skeletal muscles earlier in the previous lessons. Today we are going to discuss the ultra structure of the skeletal muscle. So first of all, we will see uh, some details about the actin protein. So actin proteins are basically six actin filaments are uh, surrounding each myosin filament. So around each myosin filament, there are six uh, filamentaceous proteins that are known as actin proteins. Actin exists in two forms. Remember this point. So uh, the number one is the G actin and number two is the F actin. So, as you can see in this diagram also, G actins are uh, globular actin proteins. Uh, these are not actually a spherical proteins. Uh, this diagram is just made to illustrate the uh, concept of a protein uh, or we can say the concept of the difference between these two proteins actually they are these are not different uh, what only happens is that G actins are the subunits of F actin. So when G actin polymerizes, uh, it forms a linear structure, or we can say a strand. It's, it's just like a strand of pearls, and that uh, becomes an F actin. So if F actin is depolymerized, then it becomes G actin proteins. So uh, now remember one thing: G actin proteins uh, possess uh, the uh, binding sites, and these binding sites are known as myosin binding sites. Uh, we are going to uh, see these binding sites in details, as in this diagram they are not uh, clearly shown. But in the coming slides, you can uh, uh, clearly see that how uh, actin proteins have the binding uh, sites for the myosin heads. So when uh, G actin pr proteins uh, polymerize, they form F actin and uh, F actin are known as fibrous filament. G actin is known as globular actin. So the thin filament is formed by the two inter uh, twin actin filaments that are twisted uh, double strand of pearls. So it's just like a double strand of pearl that is twisted around each other. So this is uh, all about the structure of actin proteins in detail. So now we are going to discuss about the myosin proteins, uh, the detailed structure of myosin proteins. So remember one thing, it is a large uh, macromolecular proteins and they are asymmetrical molecules. Why we call them asymmetrical molecules? Because uh, one side of the protein uh, contains head regions and other side contains a tail. So one has a long tail as well as two globular heads uh, on the other side. So uh, remember one thing, 
if myosin protein is disassociated, it will disassociate into six polypeptide chains. Among them, two are heavy chains which are uh, wrapped around each other to form a double helical structure or we can say a tail region and uh, four are light chains and uh, one main characteristic of myosin is its ability to bind very specifically with the actin and uh, which side of the actin the, on the uh, myosin binding sites that are present on the actin filaments. So each thick filament contains about 300 myosin molecules that are bundled together. So remember this point, this is very important. Each thick filament contains about 300 myosin molecules that are bundled together. Uh, tail forms the central part of the thick filament and the head regions are facing outward in the opposite direction on the each end of a thick filament. So this was all about uh, the details of myosin protein. Now uh, let's have a review about the A band and uh, I band. So uh, it, uh, in certain regions of sarcomere, actin and myosin filaments overlap. As you can see in this region, actin and myosin filaments are overlapping. But in case of uh, this region, if we talk about this region that is known as I band, there is only actin filaments are there. There is no uh, overlapping of myosin filaments over there. So Myosin and active filament can, uh, constitu uh, constitute the A band. A band is also known as dark band because they are anisotropic. Anisotropic means they cannot polarize the visible light. And uh, actin filaments alone, there is no myosin, only actin filaments are there and they constitute the I band. I band is also known as light band, which are isotropic or we can say the polarizing. Now we will see the detail of H zone. What is H zone? Basically uh, at the center of uh, A band, as you can see from here to here is the A band. And uh, in the central region, there is a, a region where only myosin is present. There is no overlap between the actin and uh, myosin. Only myosins are present. And uh, uh, this region is known as H zone. H stands for heli. Heli means bright. So uh, the region of A band where only myosin uh, is present is known as H zone. Now we will see the line that is present in between the H zone. This line is known as M line. Why it is known as M line? Uh, basically, M stands for a protein, uh, myomycin. So, M line basically, how we can uh, describe the location of M line? M line actually bisects the H zone by a dark line. So the M line, the function of M line is to join uh, the adjacent myosin filaments together at a point halfway along their length. Uh, M line is present in the halfway along their length. And the main purpose of M line is to hold up the myosin filaments on their proper position. So the major proteins that are present in the M line region are known as myomycin. And the uh, my myosin binding protein, which holds the thick filaments in place, is also present over there. And along with that, keratin kinase. Keratin kinase is an enzyme which catalyzes the transfer of phosphate groups from uh, phosphokeratin. Phosphokeratin is a storage form of high energy phosphate groups. So what happens? Keratin kinase actually catalyzes the transfer of phosphate group from phosphokeratin to ADP. So ADP is uh, converted uh, to the uh, ATP molecule that is uh, the energy molecule and it is uh, needed for the contraction of a muscle. Not only the contraction but also ATP is required for the relaxation of muscles too. So this was all about the M line. The details of M line are discussed uh, in this slide. 
Now we will see uh, ultrastructures of thick and thin filaments and here you can see in this diagram the region that is shaded in uh, yellowish orange color is uh, myosin. These filaments are thin filaments that are actin proteins and uh, you can clearly observe that one head, head of the actin filament is attached with a disc and that disc is known as the disc and uh, these thick filaments are held together by a, a protein uh, that makes up an arm line and the region where only myosin uh, filaments are present is known as H zone and uh, the region where myosin filaments are present uh, completely uh, forms an A band and the region where only actin uh, proteins are present is known as I band. From, uh, so uh, as you remember from the previous uh, lessons that uh, the region between the two uh, Z discs is known as sarcomere. So the thick filaments, uh, the diameter of thick filaments, we are talking about the myosin filaments. It is 16 nanometer in diameter and composed of only myosin protein that span the entire A band and are bound to the proteins of M line and uh, to the Z discs also with the help of a protein that is known as titan. So titan is a protein domain that has a structure, a uh, helical structure uh, just like a spring. Now we will talk about thin filaments. Thin filaments are seven to eight nanometer in diameter and they are composed of actin proteins. One end of actin protein is bound to the alpha actinin, uh, that is the major protein of the Z disc. So remember this point that one end of a thin filament, or we can say the actin proteins, is bounded to the Z disc, and uh, uh, the protein of Z disc that is bounded to the actin filament is known as alpha actinin. Now we are going to see another uh, protein that is uh, present on uh, actin filaments. Now this is an actin filament and there are two more uh, protein complexes, tropomyosin and troponin. We are going to see one by one what is the function of these uh, complexes and these proteins uh, in the formation of uh, cross bridges or we can say in the formation, uh, in the process of contraction and relaxation of a muscle. So the true strands of tropomyosin uh, spiral about actin core and help stiffen it. So basically, uh, I can say that this is a ribbon-like protein uh, for an easiness. Uh, tropomyosin is a uh, ribbon-like protein that covers up some kind of binding sites. Now, these black spots are the myosin binding sites. On these sites, the head of myosin proteins are going to bind. So in case of relaxed muscle fiber, these binding sites are covered up by a tropomyosin because uh, during the relaxed condition, there is no formation of cross bridges. There is no binding of myosin binding heads to the myosin binding sites that are present on actin filaments. So tropomyosin basically blocks the binding sites on actin so that myosin heads cannot bind to the thin filaments. Now we are going to see this complex that is known as troponin complex and let's see what is the function or role of this complex in the contraction and relaxation of the muscle, uh, skeletal muscle. So basically troponin, remember one thing, that troponin uh, consists of three polypeptide complexes. Number one is the uh, troponin inhibitory complex and uh, this inhibitory subunit uh, binds to the actin. So we can say that uh, troponin inhibitory complex basically uh, forms a link between the complex, the troponin complex and the actin. Then comes the TNT. TNT stands for the troponin tropomyosin complex and basically this uh, complex helps to position the tropomyosin on the actin. So it holds up this uh, ribbon protein that is tropomyosin in its location. 
Number three is the TNC. TNC is known as troponin calcium complex. And remember one thing, when nerve impulse is generated and it sends the signal to the effector, effector is a muscle to contract. Okay, so that nerve impulse is going to uh, stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum that is uh, surrounding the muscle fiber in that uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum calcium is stored so once the, uh, it, uh, uh, the calcium is triggered calcium is released from the cytoplasmic reticulum and this released calcium is going to bind now on troponin calcium complex once this binding is uh, uh, done which kind of binding the binding of uh, troponin calcium complex and the calcium ions what will happen it will cause the sliding of tropomyosin so that myosin binding heads, uh, myosin binding sites are exposed. Okay. The binding of calcium ion to the troponin complex at troponin calcium complex, what will happen? It will cause the sliding of myosin binding sites. So, in this way, the binding sites are exposed and the binding heads of myosin filaments are going to uh, attach on these binding sites. So this will help to contract the muscle. Now we will see the muscle contraction in detail. Uh, so get ready for a detailed topic and how muscle is contracted and uh, after contraction how muscle gets relaxed. So here comes a very important model and this model is known as sliding filament model. So the statement of this model, it states that during the contraction, the thin filaments slide past the thick ones so that the actin and myosin filaments overlap to a greater degree. So let's uh, try to understand this statement, what this statement is going to tell us. So uh, look at this, this is a Z disc, blue ones are the actin filaments and pink ones are myosin uh, proteins. And as you can see, there is a formation of uh, attachment and detachment of these myosin heads on an actin filament. And in this way, uh, the thin and thick filaments slide past each other and the distance between the two adjacent Z disc decreases and the edge zone uh, nearly disappears. And uh, this is now contracting unit and after the contraction, it gets relaxed also. So in this way, the skeletal muscles uh, help you to move uh, the body part or, in, or we can say it also helps to locomote the whole body. So in case of relaxed muscle fiber, thick and thin filaments overlap only at the ends of A band, but during the contraction, uh, it comes towards the center and the muscle fibers are stimulated by a nervous system. Remember this point. So during contraction, what happens? So basically, uh, myosin heads are attached onto the myosin binding sites. Where these sites are present, these sites are present on actin in the actin filaments. And the sliding begins. These uh, links are called cross bridge. So basically, the attachment of myosin head to the myosin binding sites on actin is known as cross bridge formation. Look at this diagram. So basically what happens when ATP uh, comes, uh, the ATP hydrolyzes into ADP and as a result, it gives a power to the head of myosin so that it can uh, rise and uh, attach to the myosin binding sites on actin. And uh, there is a power stroke and because of that power stroke, the actin filament is moved forward. And this happens in the presence of calcium when calcium binds to the troponin and uh, this causes the conformational changes uh, so that tropomyosin slides and uh, myosin binding sites on actin is exposed. 
so from where does this calcium these calcium ions are coming these calcium ions are basically coming from the sarcoplasmic reticulum so cross bridges are formed and broken several times during a contraction in this way uh, uh, because of the formation and broken of cross bridges uh, this head is going to bind first of all on this side then this will slide past and then it will detach and this head is going to bind on the next uh, binding side of the actin so in this way uh, the thick and thin filaments slide past over each other just like a uh, uh, red shades to generate attention and propel the tiny filaments towards the center of the sarcomere in this way uh, the attachment and broken down of uh, cross bridges takes place so look at this and observe very carefully when there is a contraction uh, there are some regions that are going to uh, decrease in size and some are going to disappear and uh, some are uh, some regions are not changed at all so identify these regions uh, you can write in the comment sections also or you can write for yourself on a piece of, a piece of paper so that you can remember so i'm going to discuss one by one during the contraction remember i bands are shortened now look at this when this unit is going to contract i bands are going to shorten see as you observe the i band shortens secondly h zone disappears a bands move closer but they do not change in length this a band and this a band is going to become closer to each other but the size of a band is not changed so remember this point a bands are not changed they remain there they remain at their own position and causes the movement of uh, actin filaments actually and the distance between the two z disks uh, this is a z disk and this is another alternating z disk the distance between the two z disk is reduced so uh, i hope you know, have not known the important uh, points of this slide now this is an actual microscopic image of uh, the a uh, sliding filament model of uh, skeletal muscle and just look at this how amazing uh, this uh, whole phenomenon is we can't actually explain this phenomenon uh, or this uh, minute uh, type of creation of allah that how beautifully allah has organized uh, a micro at a microscopic level the organizational level just imagine how properly organized uh, everything is so these are the actin filaments uh, that are moving along the myosin uh, proteins and this is an m line and this is an s zone as you can see during the contraction uh, z disks these are the z disks that are coming closer to each other and uh, when they come close to each other uh, s zone nearly disappears but there is no change in the a band as you remember a band is the Uh, part of uh, sarcomere that contains uh, myosin proteins now uh, let's see how uh, cross bridges are controlled so we have discussed each point earlier this is just a review of the lesson so number 1 muscle contraction is initiated by a nerve impulse arriving at the neuromuscular junction what is a neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction is a point at which the uh, axons of a neuron uh, make the affected region that is a muscle part so that the nerve impulse is transmitted to the affected to generate a response secondly nerve impulse is carried through the sarcolemma to the t tubule if you remember the transverse tubule structure then to the sarcoplasmic reticulum now what will happen the calcium gates of cytoplasmic uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum opens and releases the calcium into the cytosol of the uh, myofibril 
and when muscle is at rest tropomyosin is disposed in such a way that it covers a site on the actin chain where the heads of myosin become attached so all the uh, myosin binding sites are covered up by a protein that is known as tropomyosin next when muscle is required to contract calcium ion binds to the troponin uh, complex uh, or troponin molecule and causes them to move slightly as a result the tropomyosin is also displaced and the binding sites uh, that are meant for the myosin heads are exposed once the myosin head has become attached to the actin filament atp is hydrolyzed to adp and inorganic phosphate and the cross bridges are broken down so the formation and breakdown of cross bridges occur again and again during the sliding filament model and as a result it causes the contraction of a muscle now we have a video demonstration and we are going to see in detail that how nervous uh, uh, nerve impulse is generated and nerve impulse triggers the muscle skeletal muscle to contract and uh, to release the calcium and cal that calcium actually causes a contraction on binding and uh, binding of uh, myosin heads and everything that we have discussed we are going to see the animated version of this uh, contraction and relaxation of skeletal muscle so are you ready let's see you use muscles every day to do activities this woman is using muscles to breathe circulate blood and move her hand to take notes your cardiac and smooth muscle tissues are involuntary you do not consciously control their actions skeletal muscle works under voluntary control Skeletal muscles are composed of bundles of muscle fibers. Muscle fibers are long cylindrical cells containing several nuclei. Muscles will contract or relax when they receive signals from the nervous system. A neuromuscular junction is the site of the signal exchange. This is where the synaptic bulb of an axon terminal and muscle fiber connect. Muscle fibers are composed of many myofibrils. A myofibril contains contractile units called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres run adjacent to one another down the length of the myofibril. Each sarcomere consists of alternating thick and thin protein filaments, giving skeletal muscle its striated appearance. The muscle contracts when these filaments slide past each other. The thick filaments are myosin, which are anchored at the center of the sarcomere called the M line. The thin filaments are composed of the protein actin, which are anchored to the Z lines on the outer edges of the sarcomere. Because the actin filaments are anchored to the Z lines, the sarcomere shortens from both sides when actin filaments slide along the myosin filaments. Although the action between the filaments is described as sliding, the myosin filament actually pulls the actin along its length. The cross bridges of the myosin filaments attach to the actin filaments and exert force on them to move. This action is known as the sliding filament mechanism of muscle contraction. In this model, the sarcomeres shorten without the thick or thin filaments changing in length. A contraction begins when a bound ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP and inorganic phosphate. This causes the myosin head to extend and can attach to a binding site on actin, forming a cross bridge. An action called the power stroke is triggered, allowing myosin to pull the actin filament toward the M line, thereby shortening the sarcomere. ADP and inorganic phosphate are released during the power stroke. The myosin remains attached to actin until a new molecule of ATP binds, freeing the myosin to either go through another cycle of binding and more contraction or remain unattached to allow the muscle to relax. Muscle contractions are controlled by the actions of calcium. The thin actin filaments are associated with regulatory proteins called troponin and tropomyosin. When a muscle is relaxed, tropomyosin blocks the cross-bridge binding sites on actin. 
When calcium ion levels are high enough and ATP is present, calcium ions bind to the troponin, which displaces tropomyosin, exposing the myosin binding sites on actin. This allows myosin to attach to a binding site on actin, forming a cross bridge. Calcium ions are stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum and are released in response to signals from the nervous system to contract. Neurotransmitter molecules are released from a neuron and bind to receptors, which depolarizes the membrane of the muscle fiber. The electrical impulse travels down the T-tubules and opens calcium stores. Calcium ions flow to the myofibrils, where they trigger a muscle contraction. As the actin and myosin slide along each other, the entire sarcomere shortens as the Z lines draw closer to the M line. As the sarcomeres in myofibrils contract, the entire muscle fiber will shorten. When muscle fibers contract in unison, a muscle can produce enough force to move the body, allowing you to take notes. So that's uh, all for today. I hope you enjoyed the uh, uh, animated version of uh, contraction and relaxation of muscle. And uh, the topic of today is, uh, I hope it is uh, very much clear to you. But if still you have any question, any query, you can write down in the comment section below. I'm here to answer your queries. And uh, 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 don't forget to re revise this topic again and again so that you can uh, pick up the points uh, properly. So that's all for today. Thank you uh, very much for your time. And uh, we will meet inshallah in the next lesson of this chapter. And hopefully uh, tomorrow's lesson will be the last lesson of this chapter. And uh, till that time, study hard, take very good care of yourself, of your parents, of your siblings and your friend and all the people uh, around you. Take care. Allah Hafiz.